Hi, this is Ian Wright, and I've been asked to do a podcast on Down Syndrome, as it's World Down Syndrome Day today. I spend and have done for the last 20, 25 years, spent time working with Down Syndrome babies and children and actually adults as well. We have a clinic called the Daisy Clinic, which is a clinic that's run on a charitable basis, which is based in County Tipperary in Ireland, which is a teaching clinic which teaches osteopaths to work with paediatrics and specialises in treating children with a wide variety of special needs. In this clinic, we invariably, on a normal day in the clinic, would treat maybe five to ten children with Down syndrome. So we work a lot with this situation and I just wanted to talk about what actually we do with Down syndrome babies and children. So the effect of Down syndrome on a baby and a child is myriad. There's there's a variety of things that that are affected. The first thing and the most obvious thing is the development of the middle face, which gives the Down syndrome baby and child a certain characteristic look, which is related to the development of certain parts of the middle face in terms of the the function of the maxillary bones, the palate. This, because of the restriction in growth in certain parts of this, the palate and that part of the face can lead to certain issues and certain troubles which can be quite bothersome for Down syndrome babies and children. The most obvious being difficulties in breathing, lots of mucus production, sinus issues. This is, I mean, incredibly common and causes them actually quite a lot of distress. Because of the lack of growth of the upper palate, a Down syndrome baby child tends to stick their tongue out. The tongue seems big, and they tend to stick it out. They tend to mouth breathe. This in in itself has quite a big effect in terms of the development of the sinuses. When we breathe as a baby and a child through our nose, when you're born, actually, there is very minimal development of the sinuses. And the sinuses develop by us breathing through our nose. And that creates those air spaces as the bones develop around them. It's quite an interesting process. When you breathe through your mouth, the actual sinuses don't develop as well or as clearly. That coupled with the genetic predisposition of the bones not to open up as well really locks up that part of the middle face in a Down syndrome child. What we try and do as osteopaths is free these bones up as much as they can, just get as much intricate little movement of these bones which can hopefully, to some degree, help with sinus drainage and functional development of the sinuses. That in itself is quite important. There are other issues which affect a Down syndrome, trying the myriad of issues. Um, there's a tendency to thyroid dysfunction, there's a tendency to congenital heart defects, there's a tendency to neurodevelopmental delays, um, and there's a, develop, there's a tendency to other musculoskeletal issues like uh, ten, uh, or weakness at the upper neck, for example. Another area that I'm particularly interested in um, as an osteopath is this tendency to neurodevelopmental delay because how it manifests and what I, what as osteopaths we, we look at working with is a lack of motion. So in the nervous system, there's a lack of breathing motion. And what we're trying to do always is get things to move. So our job is to free up things that are blocked and get them to move and have some degree of functional movement. So when you're working with a young child who has this predisposition to a, a because of a genetic cause to certain 
issues, which we work with a huge myriad of uh, genetic disorders, we're looking at potential and maximising potential. So what all we do is free everything up as much as we can in whatever it may be, in the musculoskeletal system, in terms of freeing up the fluid dynamic, which may help drainage and mucus, et cetera, et cetera, and immune function. Whatever we're trying to do is we're just freeing whatever we can using gentle, hands-on techniques to free up restrictions. And as we do so, we hopefully will maximise potential. So it's all about potential. I personally have a great affection for working with Down syndrome children. They're absolutely wonderful children. It's a great honour to work with them. Anyway, happy Down Syndrome Day.